Hello, and welcome back to Rebel with a Plan. I'm so glad that you're hanging out with me today. Uh, if you are watching this the day it comes out, happy Halloween, if that's a thing that you celebrate. Uh, we do, and we're very excited for trick-or-treating, and we're going to have pizza for dinner, and it's going to be a good time. Uh, but not the point. <laughs> today we are going to do a quick flip through of my October bullet journal to see the different horror movie themes that I used and the different layouts. And then we're going to go over the actual most important part, I think, of this video is the monthly review and why you might want to think about having one for yourself. Mine is super simple, and it's simple for a very specific reason, which we're going to get into at the end of this video. So stay tuned, enjoy the quick little flip through of my bullet journal layouts for October, and then let's get ready to learn some stuff about monthly reviews and why you should have one. So as I've said multiple times this month, this is my favorite bullet journal layout that I've ever done. I had so much fun with this horror movie theme. Like I can't even tell you, but um, I do my monthly setups on my Patreon. So um, if you want to see how I set things up and how I decide to go about it, if you ever want to vote on a theme for my planner, my Patreon stuff is in the description box below. We have a good time over there. There's exclusive videos, exclusive planner downloads. It's a fun time. So this month's theme obviously was horror movies. And so I have my little dashboard and this was a like a happy fun times, things I wanted to do in October. And then we go into my monthly calendar, which I didn't use as much as I wanted to. Um... I had a plan for this that didn't work out, and I think that that's pretty on brand for me. So we will just move on. I have my cleaning tracker and my habit tracker, which I can't, I can't keep up with my habit trackers. I want to, and I love a check mark and everything, but for some reason, right around the middle of the month, I just stop keeping track of things, and it's terrible, but I do. So the first week was my Beetlejuice theme, which, um, I, I mean, I love all these and I'm probably going to say it every time I flip the page. Oh, I loved this one. So just, you know, deal with that. But, um, for, as far as layouts go, I think this one was probably the best in terms of where I had the boxes, but, um, I did have some smears and stuff and that's okay because we're all about perfect imperfection here. So it's not about how pretty it is. It just needs to be pretty to you, right? So um, I did enjoy this kind of setup. My shining theme was so great in my head. And it's, I think, visually what I wanted. But man, these boxes were way too small and I couldn't fit everything in them that I wanted to. So I definitely need to stick with a two-page spread when I'm in my bullet journal because I just have too much going on to deal with these tiny little boxes. But again, visually, very cute. So then we move into my Nightmare Before Christmas theme. And again, the this layout did work. And I do still like having my meal plan as a separate thing. But... Um, I, I, want, I wanted a sprint tracker because I had to finish. I had a book I had to get done. Um, and I did get it done and it did release. Uh, but I didn't track any of my sprints in here. So I set this one up specifically so I could have a sprint tracker and then I never used it. Again, totally on brand. And then we get to last week. This was my favorite one that I did. Freddy Krueger is my favorite horror movie monster. And then, you know, I loved the Jason one's stickers, so I added those in. I didn't touch my bullet journal this week. I filmed this stuff, or I, I mean, I filmed the setup. I, I set it up this way for a specific reason, and I didn't use it at all. Um, I mostly made to-do lists all week, like in a separate notebook. I didn't even use it, which really makes me sad. And I might, I might try to pull these stickers out and save them. Uh, because I feel like I wasted them, which is not true. I didn't waste them. I love the layout and it's super cute, but I didn't use it. And that bugs me <laughs> because 
I love the spread so much and I didn't touch it. I was I was too busy to plan, if that makes any sense to you. And if you're a planner, it makes sense to you. So I just, I didn't have time to work in my planner this week. And that really, I was really, really disappointed. But it is what it is. And some weeks are like that. And unfortunately, I picked my favorite theme for a week. I was too busy to enjoy it. So now we're going to get into the actual meat of what I wanted to talk to you about. And that is my monthly review. So this is my monthly review. And I'm going to go into more detail, you know, face to face in just a minute. But um, I did want to show you how I lay it out. So I just do three and they're not even questions. Sometimes they're I word them as questions, but I have a box for what worked for me, a box for what didn't work for me and a box for my favorite memories. And that is my monthly review. Like I keep it super simple and I will go into why in just a minute. But this is the most helpful and simple way I've come up with to do a monthly review for myself. And then I over here, I track my numbers, what I started with, what I ended with, and any growth, any change to these metrics that I want to track. So let's turn this around and have a little conversation. So that was my October layouts in my bullet journal. I had so much fun with it. Uh, Obviously, I didn't stick with it as much as I wanted to. The habit trackers are always an issue for me, as I said, but you know, but the layouts were cute and I'm really happy that I did it. Um, But you know, next month I'm moving into a happy planner again and I think that that is going to be more helpful for you um, because I think that not a lot of people actually do bullet journals anymore or it feels that way anyway um, just from YouTube and not seeing as much content as I used to about bullet journals. But I'll just have more room in a happy planner. Plus, I make custom daily pages that I think are going to be super helpful for me. I don't know about you guys, but November and December are the busiest months for me. And it's partly trying to cram in all the things that I want to get done before the end of the year. And partly because I have so many distractions outside of my business that, you know, family and parties and dinners and things that take up time. So my schedule is tighter with more things. I don't know. It's it's a problem. But um, yeah, so next month we're going to move into a happy planner and hopefully those videos are going to be super, super helpful for you. But right now, I do want to talk about why you should consider having a monthly review at the end of every month. I think that a lot of times we forget to celebrate our smaller wins. So if we have a goal for the month and we get half the tasks completed, but not the complete goal, we think we have failed somehow. And that's just not true. Every step forward that you take is a win. Every step closer you get to the end goal needs to be celebrated and you need to take credit for the work that you are doing. And I feel like we forget, you know, we forget how much time we put into something, how much work we did on something, because if we don't finish it, we think that somehow that doesn't count. And it absolutely counts. You did the work and you need to start congratulating yourself and celebrating it. So I always start with my wins. What worked for me? This is also so that I know that if a project did well, if a launch went well, if a book was well received, I need to do more of that. I need to carry that forward and continue to do the things that are working. So when I look at what didn't work for me, Things that maybe, you know, a launch that failed or a book that didn't really resonate with people. I need to stop carrying that stuff forward. I need to stop giving my time and energy to the things that aren't working. That doesn't mean I failed. That doesn't mean that it was a bad idea. It just wasn't the right thing at the right time for me. So I need to stop giving it my time and energy. So that is why I look at my wins and I look at my losses And then I have a section for my favorite memories. And that's just so I can look back and see all the cool things that happened too. The funny things that my kid or my husband said. 
the fact that I got kissed by a goat in October. I mean, that is something I want to remember. I want to remember that so much that I made it part of my logo. So, you know, I'm a city kid and I don't get to spend a lot of time around farm animals. So getting kissed by a goat was a big moment for me. That was a win and a best memory. Thank you very much. The other part of my monthly review is I like to keep track of my social media numbers and some health and personal metrics that are important to me. Um, as an author, as a content creator, as an Etsy shop owner, you know, metrics are how I know that I'm doing the right things, that I'm showing up in the way that my audience expects me to show up. So when I get a dozen new subscribers, the first month I'm back on YouTube after a long break, I know that I'm doing the right thing. And I'm hopeful that you are subscribed. And if you're not, I would super appreciate it if you'd click that button. But um, <laughs> not the point. I mean, it is the point, but that's, <laughs> that's not where I'm going with this. So if I post to Instagram every single day and I lose followers, I am not posting the right kind of content. And that is a lesson learned. It's not a failure. It's a lesson that I've learned and I need to adjust the things that I'm posting or I need to post more or maybe I need to post less. But the numbers are just information that I can use to formulate a new plan in the next month. So while I think the metrics are, you know, it's a personality thing. If you don't like to look at your numbers, if you base your worth on your numbers, I would suggest you don't track them because it's just information. It's a, it means nothing about you as a person. They're just numbers. So if that is something that's kind of a trigger for you, I would suggest you skip the numbers part. But I do highly recommend that you just take a minute to write down everything that worked for you that month, what maybe didn't work for you that month, and like the cool things that happened that month. And I fill that out throughout the month. Like when I get a big win, I go to the back of that month and I write down, you know, little bullet point, this happened that was really cool. If I get sick and I miss three days of work, well, that's a loss for me and I write it down so I don't forget because trying to remember a month's worth of information is kind of difficult. So if you just keep that as a tabbed page that you can go to, you know, every time you get a win or a loss or a a piece of information that you want to remember, just go ahead and jot it down throughout the month. Don't wait until the end of the month to fill it out because you'll forget things. And I think it's really important that we, especially the wins, even if you don't put your losses in there, if you just put your wins, you're going to have a snapshot of all the things that you accomplished every single month. And it's going to feel so good because it doesn't matter that the whole project got done, right? Because I got 17 pieces of a thousand piece puzzle put together and that's progress. And that's what it's about. It's about remembering all the progress that you make because that is your time and your energy. And it's important for you to be reminded by yourself all the good things that happen, all the memories, all the wins, and the losses are just, you know, they're just information. It's just so you know maybe what to let go and to move on from things or to learn a lesson from it and start tweaking things. You know, you can look at it however you need to look at it, but for me, a monthly review is absolutely invaluable and I have to have those snapshots of what works and what doesn't so that I know where to focus my energy moving forward. And that's it. That was my long-winded explanation on what was supposed to be a very short <laughs> little explanation of why you need a monthly review. But I hope that you found that helpful. And if you did, I would love it if you would like this video. If you are not subscribed yet, it would be super helpful to me if you would. And it would be super helpful to you too because I post planner content twice a week, most weeks. And, um, you know, we have a lot of fun here. So I would super love for you to join the Rebel with a Plan family. And if you celebrate Halloween, happy Halloween. And I hope that you have a wonderful November. I will see you back here soon with my next planner video. And I just want to remind you that I love you and I'm so proud of you. And I just love spending this time with you. Have a great day.